What are some special functions that everybody should know? Especially in particular if we're talking about that are very useful that everybody uses. What about reals that get mapped to the imaginaries? Some particular functions that map reals to the imaginary numbers. The first is the floor function. Anybody know what the floor does? The floor function will take a real number and tell you if it's an int, it stays an int. If it's not an int, it tells you the first int to its left. It's equal to x if x is an integer. It's equal to the first integer below x if x is not an integer. So for example, what's the floor of negative 5? What's it do to ints? Nothing. What's the floor of 1.2? 1. 1. What would be the floor of minus 1.001? Negative 2. It's the first integer to its left. Is everybody okay with that? Why do we have floor functions? Because we want to turn in the reals into ints on a regular basis. Uh, other functions that we use a lot of instead of the floor is the ceiling. <coughs> the ceiling function essentially goes the other way. If x is an int, it just simply leaves it alone. On the other hand, it's the first integer above x if x is not an integer. So again, what would be the ceiling of negative 5? Negative 5. What would be the ceiling of negative 1.0001? Negative 1. Just goes to the right. It doesn't go to the one that's closest. What would be, what would be another one that everybody should know? Round, right? You should know the round function, <coughs> which just simply moves you to the nearest int. What if you're right in the middle? Which way do you go? What if there is no nearest int? You go normally up. Another one that everybody should know, from a real to numbers that are greater than or equal to 0. That would be the non-negative reals. Um, what's the absolute value of x? If x is greater than or equal to 0, what does the absolute value do to it? What's the absolute value of 10? What's the absolute value of 1.1? So it doesn't do anything to it. What's the absolute value of 0? 0, all right? What, on the other hand, what if x is less than 0? What's the absolute value of negative 3? It's 3, right? So what does it do? It puts an extra negative on it to make it positive. It's like, well, I, it, I make it positive. Well, you have to tell me how you make it positive. <laughs> Put an extra sign on it, now it's positive. Is everybody okay with both x and a minus x are positive numbers? All right, uh, other ones to know? Things that go from the natural numbers to the positive integers and factorial. What's zero factorial? Is one. What's one factorial? One. What's two factorial? What is three factorial? Factorial is shorthand notation. Just like what's exponentiation? It's a bunch of multiplies, right? What's 3 to the fifth? 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times. I don't want to write that, so I'm going to write 3 to the fifth. What's 4 times 7? It's 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7. I don't want to write that. I write 4 times 7, right? Multiplication is multiple additions, right? 
factorial is the same concept. It's a shorthand. Why do you think 0 factorial is 1? We'll get to that when we do counting problems. Factorial is a way of arranging things without replacement. And so if I would do things like, uh, how many ways can I put five people at the front of the room? Well, how many choices do you have for the first position? Five. How many choices for the second position? Four, because one's already been picked. And it goes five times four times three times two times one, and so we write it factorial. How many ways could you arrange nobody? One. Don't do it by definition, right? And we'll have some algebra that goes to that, but zero factorial is necessary to be one because of counting problems. Because the thing is, is arranging nobody is the same thing as, on the other hand, when we talk about arrangement of all people being the same type and you can't tell the difference. 